All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Daily Devotionals. Today is a new book in the devotionals. We're starting the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, the actions of the early church. And I'm very excited. This is going to be very action packed, fast moving. So here we go. Daily Devotionals, Acts chapter one. Now, just for an overview, the book of Acts is a book of action. This book is a sequel, actually, to the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke. If you're curious about that, you can go back and listen to the Gospel of Luke. It should be in the Daily Devotional file on YouTube. But this is a sequel written by Luke. In this book, Luke reports the actions of the early church and the disciples. He shows how they effectively reached entire cities and saturated whole countries with the Gospel. The actions described in this book shows God empowering men and women who decided to stand for God with the Holy Spirit, working for them, in them, and through them. And so that's kind of an overview. Let's see what it says. It starts off with these words, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus. Now, once again, go back to the book of Luke, and you see Luke writing to Theophilus as well. Of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. This shows to me the priorities of the ministry of Jesus. He said to do, serve, act, give an example for, and then number two, teach. Jesus was the type of leader that did first and taught second. Like he washed his disciples' feet and then he taught the lesson. He said, I did this for an example for you. That way you know how to love one another. So Jesus was a to do first, serve first, teach second leader. Jesus was a do first, then talk type of person. I'm sure you know people the other way around. They talk first and then they do. Or is one, let me put it like this. Overproduce under promise. Overproduce under promise. That's what kind of leader Jesus was. Until the day in which he was taken up. This is Jesus talking about taken up. He's kind of given a recap to Theophilus. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto his apostles whom he had chosen. Okay, so this highlights the proofs of Jesus' ministry. He left us for his heavenly home. He leaves them through the Holy Ghost. He chose them to do his works. He gave them commandments to follow. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen to them 40 days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't just rise from the dead. He continued to prove himself after his passion. What was his passion? His passion was our salvation. He extended his earthly ministry for 40 days to ensure that it would not be in vain. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. What is the promise of the Father? We will learn. Which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. He was telling them, do not move until you feel the Holy Spirit. It's your provision. It's your guide. It's the promise. He was reminding them that there is an experience beyond man, something from heaven, something supernatural. The promise of the Father equals the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. When they therefore come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom of, to Israel? So even after all this, they were still thinking that Jesus came to restore Israel. They were missing the bigger picture. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Jesus is telling them, hey, don't worry about the times and seasons. There's something bigger. There is something more important than the times and the seasons. And here it is. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus is saying, don't be concerned about times and seasons, about is this going to happen or that going to happen? When's this going to take place? When's this prophecy going to happen? But rather be concerned about being a witness of me, and I'm going to give you the power to do it in the day that you live. So in Acts 1 and 8, we find this promise, but you shall receive. What is the promise? Power. The promise receiving is power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The purpose of receiving the power is to be a witness unto Jesus, a witness of Jesus. Where? The place? 
of this promise, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and into the othermost part of the earth. The power of the Holy Ghost is not for your benefit or to bring glory to you. It's the gospel and to bring glory to Christ. And whenever he had spoken these things while he beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. So 5,000 people were actually present at this event. It was undeniable. He had been telling his 12 about this moment, and now this moment has arrived. He went to the cross, he resurrected, and now he's taken a cloud out of that sight. And while they looked steadfast toward heaven, as he went up, beheld two men, two angels, stood by them in white apparel, which also said, you men of Galilee, and I love this, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken from you in heaven, shall also come in like manner as you have seen him go up. You saw him go up, and guess what? He's coming back. Then return they into Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet. That's where Jesus ascended, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Mar Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer, in supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. They were united in person. They were together. They were united in continuing purpose and they were united in prayer when people are united in purpose and in prayer anything can happen it was it didn't matter whether it was peter the fisherman to mary the mother of jesus they were all together in person in purpose and in prayer they were you know what would happen if you got into community with a group of people and you were united in purpose and in prayer and in person. Anything can happen. And in those days, Peter stood in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names among us were about 120. So there's a, and we've gone from 5,000 to 120 here. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs be fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before the concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. So Judas that betrayed Jesus. He stands up and he says, hey, we, got to, we have to address this. For he was numbered with us, and he had the tame part with a, of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong and burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. Judas commits suicide. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as the field is called in their proper tongue, Aklamiga, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the Psalms, let his inhabitants be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his Bismarck let another take. Bishopric, excuse me, Bishopric let another take. All right, so the apostles' first action was to choose a replacement for Judas. Basically, what all they're saying is we have to find a replacement, the one who betrayed Jesus and committed suicide. Wherefore, of these men which have companioned with us, all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. So, all right, so here's our group that we're going to choose from, beginning from the baptism of John until the same day which he was taken up from us. So there's kind of some of the requirements. They had to be with us from Jesus' baptism all the way through the time he's taken up. Must be one ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. They were looking for men who had the character of the apostles and who had been with Jesus and could affirm his ministry. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show us whether these two men have chosen, that he may take part in the ministry of the apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. All right, so two men fell into the category, and after prayer and lots, now lots is a common method in biblical times to receive direction, Matthias was selected. Today, we receive direction from Scripture. We receive direction from a witness of the Holy Ghost in our spirit. When our spirit and the Holy Spirit merge, and you just kind of have that feeling or that red flag pop up, the Holy Spirit speaking to you, you receive direction, and from spiritual leadership. That's why we go to church. We have spiritual leadership in our lives. We have to have that covering. So. That is chapter one, the book of Acts, 
begins with a very fast-paced action. Jesus speaks his final words. He ascends into heaven. He empowers others through a vision. Even though they are now leaders, not merely followers, they ask Jesus when the kingdom will come. Jesus doesn't tell them, but instead communicates a vision for reaching the world. They thought of defense. Jesus was thinking offense. The disciples then assemble in unity, pick a 12th apostle. They were to start in Jerusalem, then go to Jerusalem, Judea, expand to Samaria, and ultimately in the end of the world, which is where we're at. This was not a man-made vision. This was a God-given vision. Man-made vision is created on human gifts. God-given visions are received as revelation through prayer. So that leads me to the question I'd like to leave you with today. What is the Holy Spirit revealing to you today? What is God telling you? How, what are you hearing from, from God? So, so here's my suggestion for today. Find somebody that you can be in unity with in person, in purpose, and in prayer. Unify around something and ask for God's direction. God bless you. Have a great day. and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.